not in publication yet, but we're preparing. We've repeated the experiment in the hot spring over and over again because we, through those little vials of wet dry cycling, we formed those long polymers that Charles Darwin was talking about. And you're going to be one of the first uh, groups to see this right here. That little stringy thing is RNA. That's about almost a thousand chain units long. That's an atomic force microscope image of a biopolymer forming from scratch in a hot spring pool. And we are now repeating this. this is from our colleagues in Denmark, this AFM image. And it's, it's breathtaking stuff because it shows how nature in a cycling world called the Earth can get started. And we're going to go through how that all fits together. So as you, you met uh, Precious the Stromatolite here, uh, she has sisters. Uh, at 3.5 billion years ago, they found hot spring stromatolite in Australia, not far from where I picked up this. They've also found stromatolites in deep veins in the earth. They found stromatolites at lake shores, which is uh, this one here. And stromatolites still exist. This is Shark Bay in Western Australia. You can go and touch these things. They're still around. The oldest forms of life on Earth are still with us. So how does it all happen? What is the secret engine, the engine that could bring life from inanimate to animate matter? The, this is the alchemist's quest of old before they got into turn the lead gold into gold thing for extra funding. <laughs> they were charged with animating dead matter into the living. And this was discovered by my colleague David Deemer at UC Santa Cruz, who built this machine, this crazy machine, 10 years ago. It would take vials around a cycle, hydrate them with one step, and dehydrate them with another in the presence of something called lipid. And lipid is your cell membranes. You're just a walking bag of li lipid, after all. <laughs> and if you have lipid, almost like bathtub soap, and it dries down, it forms a bathtub ring. And in between those layers of the bathtub ring, you can form polymers. You can do this in your kitchen. We did this in Dave's a frying pan in Dave's uh, <laughs> Before we went to New Zealand, we did it all in a frying pan. And our colleagues and, our, and us have formed RNA they form peptides this way, which is a simple form of protein, and now we self-assemble DNA from scratch, from its building blocks. What dry cycle? And I trucked out to Yellowstone. We had a, a permit. Don't, don't throw your sandwiches in here. Uh, standing around by the buffalo watching us, uh, I actually drew out hot spring water from this hot spring in Yellowstone, placed it in with lipid, and I saw the magic protocells forming right there and then in this hot spring water. We tried it with salt, salty seawater, just in case, to see whether life could start in the ocean, and it crystallized. It crystallized all of those forms out. And this is why science has really shifted now from an ocean origins back to land, back to Charles Darwin. So what does this get you? You can form your long stringy polymers. You can get them in little bubbles every time you Put a drop of liquid in with your bathtub ring, it buds off new little protocells full of random polymers. And you can see them there in a stain. So that's through four cycles. We're getting DNA inside, inside a vesicle. What it gives you is this. It gives you a roulette wheel that you can play a game like you would play in Las Vegas with really tough odds. That one of these protocells will start developing the functions of the living world if you're starting with quadrillions of them at a time. And who in this audience are gearheads? I call you gearheads, but nerds, certified nerds. Yeah. You're all, I see it, I see it. I see it. <laughs> so in 1980, I was the weird one. I used computers, right, in my town. I was like the alien because I used computers. Uh, but now you're all assimilated. <laughs> so I started uh, my computing world on a machine that took in punched paper tape. Do anybody remember that? <laughs> oh dear, it's embarrassing. Isn't it? um, so if you have a, this is a way to write programs without a programmer, without a creator, if you will. Punch out a whole bunch of random paper tapes, load them through a reader into a simple computer. Here's my Altair 8800. It's a source of energy, and it cycles. And it cycles through a simple CPU, and there's a rule that says, uh, 
play it or cra uh, crash, put it in the crash trash or play it again. See if it lights up lights on the front panel, play it again. The way you play it again, Sam, is attaching another program to it that might do something too. So program A, B, A, C, and A, D, maybe A, C does something else that lights up two, two lights. Well, we'll select that. A really simple selection criteria. You can write programs sequentially this way very inefficiently, so we hire things called engineers to do it only slightly better. <laughs> so over time, you could conceive that the programs could write themselves through simple selection, and you'd get from a Altair to a PC to a laptop to your smartphone, and it's the evolution of software and hardware together. Does this make sense? <laughs> Starting from random sequences. So where do we find this in nature? We find this coming in from space, and a previous speaker showed a beautiful meteorite, 4.5 billion years old, that material in the, in the organics in that can form the base units of your polymers, floating in from space as the Earth is forming. The polymers are your tapes, they're your strings. They get fed into a little simple computer called Charlie Darwin's warm little cycling pond, and they get run in protocells, little programs, that either crash in, in the case they fall apart or they, or they survive. That's it. That is it. So it's the evolution of hardware and software together. So here it all is, and this is all from laboratory science over the last 10 years. We've worked it out and it works. So here's our cycling system. Dry makes layers. There's our layers. Wet buds off little protocells. There's the budding with the polymers within. We're tested, we shake them apart, do they, do they stay stable, or do they come back down and form that bathtub sludge at the bottom? That sludge, we think, is the origin of life itself. That formation of that sludge, called progeny. It should probably win the Ig Nobel Prize. <laughs> we all come from humble beginnings. So this cycle is a cycle of selection, very, very powerful, that worked in a hot spring, works in the laboratory, and may have found the very <coughs> engine that can, can make us, can make our world. So we put it all together. Here's our landscape feeding from space. All those little particles coming down into pools, they're forming their organics, they're concentrating enough to get involved in chemistry. They find their way into an old faithful type cycling pool. They go through these three phases. And they come down and they form the sludge that forms the progenotes, that forms the microbial communities. And it's all in the rock record. The roots of the tree of life. Published recently on the cover of Scientific American. How is the origin of life related to consciousness? This is where we come into Ion's territory. So what I would suggest to you that the boundary between physics and biology is this, a combination of compartments that shape probability by crowding, like we're doing here in this room. Compartments that get together that create a network effect of communication. And on that network effect comes memory, the first genetic polymer. Creating this, effectively, a three-way cycle of, of an engine of creation. So what does this do for us? Well, it takes us from the cycling phenomenon of the universe, which is mainly just on-off, binary cycling, adds a memory step that is biology, lifts complexity up to the place where neurons arise, where there's learning in the lifetime of an organism, enough neurons pack together and you get consciousness, you get self-awareness. And I put it to you that consciousness and all of the felt, or the, all of the basically visualized experience that we have, all the models that we have, and all the felt experience are generated by this immense cycling system that has generated a huge network of probability that shapes the future, a huge network of interconnection and a gigantic stored memory. All one system. And that this system, when it becomes aware of itself, when it generates beings like us that become aware of itself and look back at our own history, becomes this, the awakened being, awakened in the cosmos, awakened at rest and at ease and in joy, a state of joy, just like Edgar Mitchell on that flight. So there is a test that you can do in your own life, 
Has everyone in this room felt that there's been a lot of synchrony and, and acceleration recently? I would put it to you that our intention, that we're in a probabilistic field, and that your intention can shape values. So having this conference in, in this beautiful way was an intention put out by ions, and you all showed up. You all came through that valley. All the actions were followed. All the miracles happened. And that your intention and your actions and your attention to the dreams you put out there can shape your future. And because they're shaping some kind of probabilistic field that we can't really detect, but we can use it all the time. So you can try this in your own life. And with this, I'll conclude and suggest that the system is actually quite simple that we're inside. It's driven by one process, a master cycler, which is simply the Earth rotating to face the sun every day, getting that beautiful shower of incident radiation, which is driving every other sub-cycle. It's the great door job. So it spins, and that energy that with wet, dry cycling started life is continuing to stack it and stack it and stack it to where a $4.5 billion dollar a billion year uh, incredible uh, spire of improbability of a potential gradient way up here. A true miracle in the cosmos. And I'll leave you with that and that now I've become a comic book uh, character by NASA. <laughs> Thank you.